Good morning, all you Sioux High Earth Science students. Rise and shine. It's 5.45 a.m. and it's raining. I don't understand that. I guess it's still November, but now it's raining after four feet of snow. And now we're getting rain and the day is wasting away. Welcome to the next series of podcasts on fossils in geologic time scale. Today we begin our look at how geologists use fossils to divide time into large chunks that gradually get smaller and smaller and the names they use for those chunks of time. We'll also look at some of the events and organisms that mark those time periods. So, get your notes out, something to write with, and let's go back in time. Okay, so fossils. What are they anyway? So get in your notes that fossils are preserved remains or traces of an organism that lived in the past and that fossils are formed when organisms die and are buried in sediment which eventually builds up and hardens to become sedimentary rock. So make sure you get that description of a fossil in your notes. Now, there are three different kinds of fossils we want to get in your notes. First, write that the first class is petrified, which is when minerals replace the remains of an organism and they become rock. So you see now over here an example of petrified fossils. So that's when minerals replace the remains of an organism and eventually those become rock. That's petrified. Now, the second we'd like you to write is mold. Mold is when the shell remains and the contents of the shell dissolve. So that's a mold. So you see now here a picture of um, the remains. Well, those remains are gone, but what, what's left now is kind of the imprint or what's left of the shell remains. And then finally, the last type is cast, which you see here. Cast fossils is when the mold becomes filled with minerals that are not part of the original organism. So make sure you get these three in your notes. Petrified, mold, and cast. Now also get in your notes that rarely but sometimes whole animals become preserved intact, but that this is very rare. If an organism is surrounded by ice or tar, for example, they might be discovered looking much the same as they did when they died, like this adasaur, which was found in the National Petrified Forest. So sometimes whole organisms are found intact. Tar and ice would be an example of where that might happen. Okay, so there are several methods used to figure out the age of fossils. Let's get them in your notes. The first is relative dating. Relative dating looks at where the fossil is located to determine its age relative to other fossils. Make sure you get that in your notes. Now, also get down that this only works if the area has been undisturbed. So relative dating looks at where the fossil is located to determine its age, but only works if the area has been undisturbed. Relative dating. No, that's not dating your cousin. Okay, next is absolute dating. Absolute dating uses, and I want you to write this in your notes, absolute dating uses radioactive elements near the fossils to determine the actual age of the fossil. So absolute dating uses radioactive elements near the fossil to determine the age of the fossil. Now the absolute age of the fossil is estimated by dating the associated igneous rock and lava flows. 
So you see that in here. Here's now the lava flows right in here. So any fossils now that would be in there, you date the rock. And then by dating the rock, you date when the fossil was, was actually locked in or glued in there. So that's called absolute dating. OK, time to start writing. Now, I want you to get this geologic time scale into your notes, the one that you see here. Now, copy this time scale exactly like you see it. And make sure you include the age side right here. So you're going to write down all these words, all right? Three different eras, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. And then you're going to write these now periods and epochs in them just exactly like you see them. And then make sure the third column has their age. This is in millions of years, by the way, or billions of years, sorry. So make sure you get that in your notes. OK, now we're going to go through the structure and all those names you just wrote down and what they mean and when they are, et cetera, et cetera. But first, a word about the words geologists use to break up these chunks of time, because I'm sure they're new to you. Um, so get in your notes that the period, here you see it right here, the period is the basic unit of geologic time in which a single type of rock system is formed. So that's a period. Write down that a period is the basic unit of geological time in which a single rock type is formed. Then write that two or more periods comprise a geological era, E-R-A. Two or more periods determine a geological era. Now, then write that two or more eras form an eon, E-O-N. Two or more eras form an eon, which is the largest division of geologic time. And then finally, write that some periods are divided further into what's called epochs, E-P-O-C-H. You see some down here. In fact, you see two different spellings of them right here. So epochs, you see eras here, you see periods, um, you see all kinds of things in here that we're going to talk about. So <clears throat> now, write in your notes that the pre-Cambrian period, the pre Cambrian period, and you see the word Cambrian right here, and here's the pre-Cambrian. The pre-Cambrian period began with the formation of the Earth 4.6 billion years ago. And also write that bacteria appeared on the Earth as of right now 3.5 billion years ago, but that's being debated. Now, Bacteria were then followed by algae and fungi. Now, just a side note on this information. Scientists are now convinced that bacteria may have arrived on our planet much earlier than 3.5 billion years ago via comets and asteroids. Make sure you get that in your notes. Now, we'll talk more about this later in an astronomy unit, yes, the last nine weeks of this class. Okay, now let's talk about some eras. Let's talk about the Paleozoic era. You see it right here. And now you see it on this chart. And go back now and find it on the chart, this chart right here. Find the Paleozoic era on here. So here's Paleozoic. So the Paleozoic era is divided into five periods. Now you can see the five periods on here. Here's the Paleozoic era. But I think it's much easier to see them here. Here's the Paleozoic. So write down the five eras and then we'll describe them. The Ordovician, the Silurian, the Devonian, the Carboniferous, which will have the Pennsylvanian and Mississippian in it, in the Permian. 
So write that down that those make up the Paleozoic era. Now, let's talk about the Cambrian period first. So again, if we go back and see the Paleozoic now, now we go forward and look at the Paleozoic era divided into five periods. The Cambrian period is one of those. Now, in the Cambrian period, sponges, snails, clams, and worms evolved. Then there's the Ordovician period, you see right here, where the first fishes evolved and other species of fish became extinct. Then there's the Silurian period, where land plants, insects, and spiders appear. So again, we're kind of moving. See the Devonian? There's Silurian. You see all these over on the side here. Okay, next is the Devonian period. And again, you see the Devonian period marked on here where amphibians evolve and cone-bearing plants start to appear. So write this in your notes. Then there's the Carboniferous period. The Carboniferous period where tropical forests appear and reptiles evolve. And finally you see the Permian period where seed plants become common and insects and reptiles, that should say reptiles, not retiles, reptiles become widespread. And then sea animals and some amphibians begin to disappear. So Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian. Okay, now on to the Mesozoic era. Again, let's go back and see our Mesozoic era Okay, so write down that in the Mesozoic era, you have three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. So write those down and then we'll talk about each one of them here in a, in a bit. So, again, Mesozoic, three periods. Triassic period, let's talk about that first. Turtles and crocodiles evolve and dinosaurs, dinosaurs disappear in the Triassic period. Here it is right here. Then in the Jurassic period, large dinosaurs roam the world. The first mammals and birds appear. Here's Jurassic. And then the Cretaceous period, where flowering plants appear, mammals become more common, and dinosaurs become extinct in the Cretaceous period. So get these three periods of the Mesozoic era into your notes. Okay, now on to the Cenozoic area, era, sorry. And now let's go back to our the one the diagram you have and you see that the Cenozoic area is era is next. Now, one, two, three, four, five six periods and epochs that you need to get in your notes and we're going to talk about each. The Paleocene, the Eocene, the Oligocene, the Miocene, Pliocene, and the Pleistocene. So make sure you get those in your notes as part of the Cenozoic era, era. Sorry, and then let's talk about each one. All right, so the Cenozoic divided into two periods. The Tertiary period. First primates appear and flowering plants become most common in the Tertiary period. And then the Quaternary period where humans evolve and large mammals like woolly mammoths become extinct. So we have all those subsets, but the Cenozoic era is divided into two periods. Okay. That's it for part one. So take a picture of your notes. Make sure that the chart is in there. Submit it to Moodle. Grab that study guide. Answer the questions. And I'll see you in part two.